One, two, three, four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's too loud, isn't it? Yes, thank you. Maybe he has lost something? Nothing. Nothing, no? Nothing important, okay. Also, und the cup then? Very nice. This is the movie about, you know, about the Congress and about everything. Yeah. I got it in my presentation, but I just have it for... Yeah. Put it on. But I mean, it's, uh, you can use it on the Facebook and okay. wherever, and uh, in, the game, in the coffee breaks, whatever you want. Okay. There's also my presentation, but I mean, you probably don't need it. We got what we got. We take everything. This is crazy, huh? I'm still like thinking about it. No, I mean, I'm, I'm so stupid. I, I should have come yesterday, you know? Yeah. This is, I mean, I'm, I mean, then you just don't have to just have a walk from there through the bridge and it's, you know.
First? Yes. Yeah, you were first. 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 Wow. Yeah, first. First. I mean, almost the Polish group, yeah? yeah. Four Germans or something? Yeah.
Good morning, everybody. You cannot imagine how happy I am to be here. See so many uh, familiar faces and persons. It's like a family meeting. I feel really emotional here that you are coming on our alumni meeting. Yeah, uh, because we have decided that we do this one day before the congress and uh, for the ceremony, and we also follow your recommendation. Hey, years and that's the reason that we are still existing because we are following your recommendations what's very important in some post here not and we are very proud on that we are very proud on that and um, I think we have uh, tried to do our best with the staffs of my department that we can realize it and also to invite the speakers you are now speakers from the alumni group, and we have, of course, one big speaker, Dr. Park from uh, Korea, and we have also a surprise, and uh, this surprise is a uh, MOI student from the first class. Yeah. And it's Jersey Berendik. Thank you for coming from Thank Warsaw. You. Thank you. Why, why it's a surprise, I tell you. I think you have the same feeling year after year, you get far away from the master course, you get older. And then you are more and more suffering, yeah? And then you have a lot of pressure to do something like an alumni group. And these are now the first batch, and they created in Poland a really good organized and structured alumni group from the IMOI. They call themselves Masters Poland, yeah? Implant Masters. Uh, Implant Masters, sorry. <laughs> I'm so nervous, sorry <laughs> for that. And um, yeah, Jersey will uh, introduce you on 10 minutes how these uh, alumni locally in uh, Warsaw and Poland are working and what are their ideas and they are what kind of event they are organizing. And it should a little bit uh, push you think about in your own country, doing more or less a little bit the same that our big idea that we have these original organizations from alumni with support, of course, from the Goethe University, um, then we are connecting to each other, yeah? This is the idea. So, Jersey, tell us 10 minutes about uh, the Implant Poland Masters. And, uh, yeah, thank you for coming, and, uh, yeah, the stage is for you. Thank you very much, Paul, for this introduction. I don't have to tell much now. But um, um, let me just uh, show you this first picture. Uh, you know, uh, I am from the class one, as Paul told you, and this is the uh, moment of our, uh, our uh, celebration, yeah? We throw our, our hats and we're very happy, but uh, unfortunately it lasts only a couple of hours and then it's gone. However, uh, it can be a beginning on something new. And uh, our idea started at the same moment, and uh, we established uh, just a year and a half later a society called Implant Masters Poland, uh, uh, which uh, 
mission is to implement the best uh, quality of treatment to our patients, the best quality of treatment uh, in implantology and in general dentistry. We did a number of uh, uh, efforts in this field. Uh, we uh, 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 had lectures, courses, we implemented new technologies in our uh, practices, uh, took part in the uh, multi-center studies, uh, uh, the, the number of uh, publications, also worked in the public relations, and uh, uh, made up two uh, social events uh, about which I'm gonna tell you later on. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, after that, we were uh, awarded last year from MOI uh, department the affiliation to as a as a um, organization in Poland with the MOI department uh, uh, of uh, um, uh, uh, Goethe University. So our fields of interest are patients, of course, and. Uh, we decided to educate these patients, to give them a number of informations on the social media, on our uh, website, as well as we uh, implemented the Professional Dental Assistance Program in Poland. Uh, I, I don't have much time to talk about it. We can talk about it during the uh, coffee break if you want. And uh, our uh, next focus is uh, uh, concentrated on the uh, uh, professionals, on the uh, dental society. So we uh, 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 already had a number of closed meetings for the members of IMP uh, with uh, different speakers uh, from Poland, from uh, different places around the world. And we organized two congresses. We called the Meet the Master Congress. Uh, the idea of Meet the Master Congress is to, uh, uh, okay, to, to invite a special person for one day uh, to let him uh, uh, present his uh, ideas, his clinical concept, his uh, 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 trials uh, to the audience, not to have just one hour or 45 minute lecture, it's given a long time to present everything that he wants to present. We already had those four famous names uh, uh, in, in Poland for the last two years. And now please look how it was uh, within this time. So um, after we uh, just finished the Congress uh, together with the MOI team uh, during the party, we decided, okay, let's make something better, something more maybe interesting for everyone, not only for Polish, Polish dentists. And we decided maybe we could make together, meet the Master Congress and the first global MOI Alumni Congress. And uh, the date is set, it's December uh, this year. We have uh, two days of conference, the first day, is specially dedicated to MOI alumni, and uh, the second day is the Mid the Master course, and the Mid the Master three we call it. Yeah. So uh, let's see. Uh, uh, this uh, this event of course is under patronage of uh, uh, MOI department, uh, and the Paul Weigel is the uh, main patron of this congress. Have a look.
Okay, to, to resume, just a few seconds, we have 12 lectures. We have an opening lecture about pairing plantatis with Professor Andrzej Witovic, he's the head of uh, General uh, Association of Polish uh, uh, Implantology Association, a closing uh, recapitulating lecture by Dr. Vogel. And uh, we'll have a nice meeting as well, the social meeting. We have a beautiful light show from the God Talent Poland Winner 2016. And uh, on the next day, we'll have Meet the Master uh, uh, session with uh, Henry Salama, four sessions, uh, almost five hours of lecture about enhanced clinical outcomes in uh, implant dentistry and a supporting lecture from my colleague, uh, Dr. Agnieszka Laskus. And uh, I hope we all meet in Warsaw. You're all invited. Uh, it's really worth to come. There, there are 16 um, uh, lectures. Uh, uh, one big name for one day, uh, Dr. Henley Salama, and uh, uh, what I'm going to say is also it's really worth to come at that time to Warsaw. It's a beautiful city, and uh, you can see the Christmas tree uh, just behind the, at the front of the Royal Castle in Warsaw. So you're all really um, uh, welcome to come. You have this leaflet in your uh, uh, materials, and uh, I hope you can find everything also, also on our website and. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope it's not more than 10 minutes. So, yeah, thank you very much. And you see, they make it very professional. And uh, what making us proud is that the MOI, where you're a member for, is uh, that we are now more and more well known and very, yeah, really have a big reputation in implantology. Uh, the big speakers, the keynote speakers, know us, know the program. And they follow the invitation to speak here in this Congress. Thank you for this effort. And I hope that it will be a very big success and it will motivate other groups uh, uh, to do similar really good efforts and successful organizations for meetings in other countries too. But you are really uh, doing a great job. Thank you very much, Percy. Thank you. So now it's an honor for me to introduce you uh, special lecturer. He's not always on the podium from AIO and from Europario. No, no, I invite him for another reason. You know, our Congress has the motto, yeah, innovation chumps. And you hear two years a lot of lecturers in your program about new developments. And um, he is an example he is a personalized example for success. And it should be an idol for you because he's a dentist, but he has an idea. And this idea is now an implant, an implant system and a big company because he is the owner of the company and he is a CEO of the company. And he's starting like you with the education as a dentist. Welcome, Dr. Park. The big boss. <laughs> from Thank the you very much. Megachen, <laughs> and I ask him to do a special lecture for you. I don't see it before. I ask him to tell us how it's possible to be a dentist and then making an implant system and going to the market to be successful. Because sometimes an idea is great, but it's not successful on the market. And sometimes even not a very nice idea is successful on the market and how you get the ideas, how is it possible that you'll be so successful with your system, with your ideas, with the education of a dentist. Thank you very much that you come over from Korea for this Congress only. We are very happy to hear you now as a special guest. Thank you. Thank Great you for honor. coming. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. My computer technique is not so good, so the voice was not controlled yet. <laughs> So let me go back one slide. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is a traditional Korean house. So whenever we have a special guest, we light up and uh, <coughs> to welcome the guest like this in the evening. So, uh, I congratulate the annual MY, very successful M MY annual congress, international congress here. And I'm the first, the first time in Goethe University Really, really great honor. I heard many times uh, about about the MOI, but this is the first time to me. 
I just came back from our symposium in Tokyo two days ago. So we had a very big uh, venue, and uh, we had uh, world famous uh, speakers there, and uh, almost a hundred, uh, one thousand two hundred people dentists attended from almost uh, fifty countries. It uh, was very nice. It was very similar with the IMA, IMP, the implant uh, masters in Poland. Yes, it will be very successful. The st structures and uh, the aim of your is really perfect. Exactly the same with our ideas. Thank you very much. It will be very successful, no doubt. And I had this subject, lecture subject today. And when I had the, the topic, I was, um, it was a little bit embarrassing to me. Uh, yes, what is a success? I think uh, success is not the, the, the target or the destination. So success is how we can enjoy our life. It's like a journey. Uh, I cannot say I'm uh, very successful, but still I'm going on at the next level. Always I'm trying to develop something new and something useful with my clicks. That's why I like this DNA chain <laughs> very much. So. You, I heard that all of you are very expert in many in your countries and uh, already more than 10 years, minimum 10 years of experience on implants and uh, you have uh, master degrees in this uh, program. It's really uh, great. And uh, this is the first slide whenever I, have, I give lecture to, to my juniors and the students. So what's your dream? When they come in the dental school, Actually, they don't know what they are going to be in the future. So many doctors, many students want to be rich and want to have a very stable life. And some of them want to be famous. And, and well, some of them has uh, dreams to become a skillful dentist. Also, very few of them want to be a businessman like me. Uh, I don't know <laughs> which one you like. <laughs> so, but if you are uh, very, very good as a dentist. Actually, you have uh, many ideas, uh, different from the current techniques and the current materials. Of course, you can make your dreams, your ideas come true. That's the business, not to make money, to have something, to make uh, something easier. Right? Now, <clears throat> I will show you some uh, slide of my passion and uh, dreams in my, in my life. Actually, I started my dental life uh, in Korea. I graduated as a small dental school in 1985 in Korea. It's not working now, okay. So Gyeongbuk National University is my hometown. And I graduated in a school there in 1985. And I trained uh, in the department of Perio. Sorry for my horse. My bad condition of <laughs> voice because I just came from Japan. And uh, I, I finished the training uh, at the period department. So basically, I'm a periodontist. And then after army service, every man should go army in Korea still. So I served the army service for three years and then came back to university and served as teaching faculty for three years more. Then in 1993, I opened my private practice as the first time. Then <clears throat> it was very successful. So many people, patients I had. So it was, I was almost exhausted in 19, almost in 2000, too many patients. So I escaped to UCLA <laughs> to study more. The, but officially to study more, but personally to take less. Uh, in UCLA, and the, the, the whole year, the one year uh, stay in UCLA was very, very important to me. And uh, many uh, professors in UCLA is inspired me, helped me to make different ideas. So when I come back to Korea, so I started the two important, important things in my life. The first one is Mirror Dental Hospital, and the second one is Megagen Implant Manufacturing Company. Of course, I didn't do this alone. I had many, many uh, cliques, uh, 
many friends helped me to make this. Now uh, we are at uh, 16th year. So, Megagen and Beard Dental Hospital is the topic I have to say today. So I know this uh, Congress, this lecture is, should be very objective and not commercial. I, I know, I respect that uh, concept, but to explain my, my journey at this, uh, so far, I have to exp explain some products I made, we made uh, during the last uh, 15 years. Please forgive me. And Mir Dental Hospital, you know, the dentist usually are not welcomed to the patients. Patients don't like dentistry, as you know. So they think just a dentist as a, as a monster or, or vampires. I found that this is almost the same in the world. <laughs> so why, why patients, our patients don't like uh, dentistry? It's because, mainly because of pain and the noise and the smell. So we tried when we start to make a mirror hospital chain in the in the Korea, so we try to make our environment as comfortable as possible, not only for us, for the patients as well. So why we don't make uh, the, our environment, the dental office, like a hotel, like a cafe, where the patients wants to go there to spend money? So treatment is just basic, excellent treatment. It's our duty as a dentist. The environment is a, a little bit different story. So maximum emotional, emotional treatment is more important than the treatment itself. So something beyond treatment and the customer service, we have to know what the, what the patient wants. They don't know. The, our patients don't know the quality of treatment that much. So, this is the first mirror hospital we made in 2002 with my colleagues. And uh, this is a 10-story building. The, we designed the whole building as a dental clinic. So still, I'm working in this, in this clinic with the 20 dentists, almost 100 employees all together. So when uh, we finished to make this building, this hospital, so even my friend said to me, you, you will be bankrupt in a year. The money from the dental clinic cannot, sub, uh, cannot uh, maintain this big hospital and the, this many steps, but you know, so we got profit from the first months. So from the first months we got profits. So it was very nice, and we made uh, three more mirror hospitals near our hometown, and we tried our environment like this. And me, I'm staying in the hospital more than my home, almost 12 hours. 12 hours I stayed here. So it should be more comfortable than my home. In, at home, I just sleep, eat, and come out. <laughs> I, I believe you guys have same, <laughs> same daily, daily routines. And uh, when I start, uh, the, we, our team has not enough knowledge on the service. Everybody was professionals, and uh, they know how to treat the patients very well. But the service mind was not so good like uh, hoteliers. So we, I brought uh, these partners to, to the service centers to, uh, to have education. How we serve our patients, not patients, our customers. And then uh, everybody has uh, some different level of uh, skills and uh, uh, on the professionals. So we made Minec Institute to share our ideas and uh, to share our knowledge experiences. Not only to our, mm, not, uh, for our uh, clicks, so we shared our experience with uh, the, the neighboring dentist and uh, the dentist from abroad. And we continue to co cooperate with other, you say, other universities. So uh, this is first uh, joint, joint, uh, what is it? Joint meeting for, with UCLA because I studied at UCLA. So the professor Tenny Dake and, um, and uh, this uh, Thomas San and the Chris Craigwold, all these professors helped us a lot so far. Still they're helping helping me. And we do we did many educations and almost a thousand dentists from abroad 
visit our hospital to have a three, two or three days course. In 2009, uh, we made one mirror hospital in Vilnius, Lithuania. Lithuania, you know, where is Lithuania? Of the <laughs> Uh, at the time, it was I visited Lithuania as first time in 2006. I love the country, so we decided to open the Mir hospital in there. So at that time, in 2009, I believe this was one of the best dental clinic uh, in, in Lithuania. Now, many very nice uh, quality of uh, dental clinic appeared now, but at that time it was good. And this guy, Dr. Beshera, uh, he, he was born in Lebanon, he, but he studied the dentistry in Lithuania and uh, trained at the oral and maxillofacial cell surgeon there. Then he is in charge of this clinic now. And, uh, he is really, 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 he is doing very well, very success successful. But Lithuania is very famous for beautiful ladies, as you know. <laughs> so my mentor, <laughs> my mentor was very happy to be there at the opening ceremony. It was very good. <laughs> and there, Lithuania has two more Bs uh, for, for the famous things. One is famous uh, beautiful ladies. One is uh, basketball. Uh, they are almost beating with American teams. And then the beer is also very nice. <laughs> and yeah. And we tried to position our mirror hospital uh, just in the middle of the university hospital and uh, the private uh, clinics. So we tried to make many, many uh, specialties, as many specialties uh, in, in the clinic, same clinic. So because of that, the number of, uh, uh, the size of mirror clinic should be quite big. This is uh, some of our mirror clinics in Korea. And this was built about 10 years ago. So we, get, we made, we built the hospital, built this building as a dental hospital. It's like very modern. And now we have uh, 20 mirror hospitals in Korea and uh, one in a, uh, two in abroad, including Bilius and uh, uh, Istanbul now. We make one more in Malaysia now. This photo was taken in 2006. 2006, almost 10 years ago. At that time, already we have this many uh, people working together. And now we have uh, 160, almost 160 dentists and almost 1,000 dental hygienists and the technicians and uh, uh, supporting teams. So Megagen was uh, started almost at the same time in 2002. So at the beginning, I had only seven people working together. Why we made the mirror uh, megagen implant company? Already we have a lot of implant companies in Korea and we have many uh, branches of uh, foreign companies. But this company started with uh, the study group, the member of a study group. From 1992, we, had, we started education in Korea and the, the group was uh, the one of the strongest education uh, platform professional educational groups in Korea. And uh, uh, many of them has uh, very strange, but very useful ideas at that time. But we suggested to Stroman, to 3i, to Nobel, uh, so why don't you make this kind of a change? This is more convenient and uh, to, for the patients, but nobody listened to us, nobody. So finally, okay, let's make our own company. Maybe some of you have a similar idea with me. So we imported machines from Japan and Germany, and uh, we imported the low material, the titanium load and all the low material from carpenter company in the United States. And we added our ideas, the hand skills and uh, the concept on the implants on or implant systems. So from the beginning, this was our ideas. Why we have to use same size of implants for the different kind of uh, teeth? different shape of this. So we developed many different kind of implant systems, such as very patty and the short implants, which is very good for the immediate implant placement, and the very tiny and the slender uh, implant systems for the tiny teeth. 
But this was done by me in 1996. This, it was good, and the patients are still using the implants very well. But as you see, at that time in 1990s, early 1990s, um, it was considered the length. Length was considered considered more important than the, than the diameters. So my teacher advised me to place as long implant as possible. So should be very near to the nerve. That means I'm an expert. <laughs> but it's very dangerous, you know. And with our implant systems, the X-ray changed like this from here to here. So why we need to place long implants? Now we can place a short and uh, narrow diameter of implants. For the here, we have a plenty of bone, but limited height. So with uh, this rescue implants, and the tiny implants, tiny teeth, so we place the, the very narrow diameter implants. We had uh, some record at that time in 2006, the biggest implant system in the world. So we developed, at that time, the Novell and the 3i showed the six millimeter diameter of implants only. Six millimeter was the biggest in the world. So we added 6.5, 7, 7.5 by 8. So we made a more range of uh, implant diameters. With this increase, we could shorten the length because of uh, uh, short and the fatty implants has enough surface areas already. So it was very nice, very popular in Korea. No fracture at all, of course. <laughs> no fracture at all. At the same time, we had a world record for the, the narrow diameter implants. So we, the, the intermezzo implant was uh, developed as a, a temporary implant. That's why the name was made as intermezzo. But it started from 1.6 to 2.5 and uh, 3.0. But with repeated use, we found that this 2.5 and 3 millimeter can be used for the permanent tools for the small teeth. So it was also very popular. Then, yes, short implants. Uh, yes, the shortest implants at that time was, at that time was a seven. And most the companies provided only seven millimeter short implants. It was, they said, this is the shortest. So all the data, the literature shows the short implant means less than 10. Oh, do, you, do you agree? 10 is long enough, too long actually. <laughs> So we said we made uh, from five, five, six, seven. So five, I, in my mind, five is really good. Uh, now, nowadays, uh, the short implant is one of the hot topic in the world. So especially on the mandible, five millimeter is working very, very nicely. So at that time, we had a record. The first company who had a approved uh, uh, registration with five millimeter short implants. And later, Bicon came in and many companies came to join, but believe it or not, we were the first. <laughs> Pegasus was the first to provide the short implants. And uh, in 2009, again, we made uh, the branch in Taiwan. So we made a subsidiary, the manufacturing company in Taiwan, focusing, aiming, the Chinese, Chinese market. So we have a, a very strong language barriers between Korea and the J China. So we encouraged for our uh, Taiwanese dentists to, as a, to become uh, our speakers. So this is opening ceremony. It's very good, but still it's working nicely. And then on top of these implants, we started more and more to develop new implant designs and any reach is much most popular now, but it's a little bit difficult to use as a beginner. I believe all the denti all you guys can understand the concept of any reach. Many doctors complained, this is too difficult for me. So we developed another one, anyone. Anyone can use. Easy concept. So <laughs> and then mini is just a small diameter of implants. And then we made the small gadgets to improve uh, the earlier loading and the immediate loading. Small gadgets for the GBL, and uh, we made uh, almost all kind of uh, 3D printing machines and CAD CAM machines, and most important thing, 
we developed for the last 10 years, R2Gate software. We made by ourselves from, the, from zero. I will explain now how we made all of this. The aim is to make implant treatment exact, accurate, and easy. And even the beginners should be able to make a similar result. That was our idea. What's the hurdle? What is the, the biggest obstacles for the beginners to become an expert? So this is our new, new factory, almost done, almost done. We are going to make an opening ceremony on January. We'll be, uh, this is about six times bigger than current factory. Exciting. <laughs> I hope you can join, you can visit Koreans next year. Okay, so as I told you, what is our goal as a clinician? I'm a dentist, I love patients, I love surgery. I love to see patient. So my, what is the problems on the implant treatments? We know the excellency of uh, longevity with implant treatments, but the problem is the length of treatment period. If you can deliver permanent restoration at the same day with implant surgery, how good it will be? Right? Just everything done in the same day. So we made the name as one-day implants. This is not only the, the lecture topic, this is the, the, the main ideas on the implant development uh, from Megagen. This patient was treated in 2011 as almost the, as the first, the first case with one-day implant concept. The patient had these uh, problems with the cracks, First, the free molar, and I extracted implants, a teeth, and placed implants with a surgical stent. It's easy. And I did the bone graft to fill the gap. And this is final customized abutment, not the temporary, the Jinkonia customized abutment. And intentionally, we made it a little bit shorter to do soft tissue graft. And then this is also final restoration, Jinkonia monolithic crown. So this is immediately after surgery. It was done in 2011. So everything was finished. What I did in this case, I did immediate implant placement, which is very popular nowadays. Everybody do immediate loading, immediate implant placement at the extractions. And bone and soft tissue grab, also very popular. Then immediate delivery of restoration for immediate loading, immediate provisionalization, which is also very popular. But how about final? This is the key. How we can make a final restoration on the placed immediately now in the extraction socket? That's the key, and that's the way we should go forward. Maybe, I believe, in 10 years, no more than 20 years, all the people will do like this with the technology. What we don't have now, we, don't, we need to have a more excellent, more excellent CBCT. If we can have CBCT, which can provide more than 50 micron, less than 50 micron inaccuracy, then the game will be changed. See? Five months later, four years later, almost six, six years later, nothing changed at all. So we call this as immediate loading, but I want to add one more word, true immediate loading. That is one day implants. So from the treatments, diagnosis and planning, do everything at once. And this is a little bit simple case, uh, which is done last year. I prepared for uh, this area with the surgical stent, all again, Jinkonia customized abutment and the Jinkonia monolithic bridges. See, surgery, you know everybody, I believe you know everything. So, custom abutments delivered immediately after surgery, then this is final restoration, semantic. 20 minutes from here to here, 20 minutes only. So, how painful the patient was? No, 
almost nothing. How we can do this? How we can do this? This is really minimally invasive surgery, but not so many dentists want to do this. Because what? I will explain. <laughs> Oron 4 is very popular, but I don't like Oron 4 personally. I like Oron 6 or Oron 8. Oron 4 means nothing for 3. <laughs> so if we have a, something wrong with one implant, it's very difficult to, to solve. So basically, I like Oron 6. So we made a new name on the basement of uh, Oron 4, Oron 5, Oron 6. So R2D4, R2D5. So everything will be planned on our software, R2Gate. So R2, D2, R2D4, R2D5. <laughs> so the patient had a, a big pneumatization on the both sinus, so we planned to do implants like this. And then this is after surgery. <clears throat> so the guided surgery is really good. It's only small holes, and we can make planning how, uh, which kind of abutments, multi-unit abutments we can use so on the planning phase. This was after surgery, immediately after surgery. You can see how precise the position of the implants. It's exactly matching with the, the position we want. So many softwares at this moment provide this kind of uh, guide. And also we prepared the 3D printed and milled uh, temporary dentures. See, like this. So just uh, two hours later, patients can chew even. This is now, not the future. So, but my aim, our, our team's aim is to make a final illustration for this, not the temporary. But because of, mainly because of the CBCT, quality of the CBCT, we cannot make a final illustration at this moment. Yes. So uh, sooner or later, I believe we can do this. Many doctors want to do this kind of surgery. I have many full mouth case. Okay, how, let me know how you can do. Yes, of course. Many doctors want to do temp, wants to do uh, this kind of one day implants. Why? Because it's it's the future. It's the future. Patient wants to do that. And many companies promoting this kind of treatment options to the patients directly. So patient wants, I heard this kind of surgical options, this kind of prosthetic options from the TV, from Facebook. So can you do this? So this is, yes, this is uh, the wish from the patients. But many doctors are afraid because of more failures. Maybe we have a small failure because this is immediate, immediate loading. And then I don't have any uh, enough digital equipment and I don't have enough knowledge, maybe more expensive and more work, but frankly speaking, less work. If you are used to it, it will be much easier. Basic, right, the main reason for the hesitation is objective key factors. We don't provide to the dentist, we didn't provide the, to the dentist the objective key factors. What is objective key factors? Let's see, let's see mine. The implant system before intraosseous uh, cylinder type, root uh, form implants, all implant systems were designed for immediate loading. No, right? So peristeal, transosseal, braid, disc implants, all designed for the immediate loading. What we are doing now, we step back actually for the uh, for the point of loading protocols. Why? This implant was too much, was too much technique sensitive and uh, too many failures. Not enough uh, data for the five year or longer uh, <clears throat> long, -term, long term success rate. That's why it was, it was uh, disappeared, almost disappeared. But in my mind, in the near future, with the CBCT and the very high level of digital technology, I think some of this technique will come up again. Yeah, we have very good techniques 
even without opening plate, we can understand the bond condition very well now. So we can print the severe cell peritium very precisely with the bone. That will increase the, p the possibility. Anyway, will be in the future. Objective key factor. What is the objective key factors? To do one day implant more confidently, so we have to have confidence on this subject. Immediate versus delayed placement after extraction and immediate versus delayed loading. I believe everybody in this room understand this. Right? See, immediate versus delayed implant placement after extraction, you, do you have any doubt? No, no, of course there is some limitations, but in most cases, if there is enough wall of uh, sockets, no difference on the prognosis. Sometimes better. Sometimes, no doubt here. How about loading? Immediate and the birth delayed loading after implant placement. In 1980s, yes, Dr. Brennan recommended us to wait three months on the mandible, six months on the maxillary. It was, it was like low. But 90, early 90s, some literature showed better, more positive uh, writings on the immediate loading. Okay, we can do this. Uh, we can do immediate loading in this case. In some cases, it was good. But in late 90s and uh, now in 2000, even immediate loading shows a higher success rate and uh, much better histology. Many, 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 many articles coming up now on immediate loading. Of course, it's because of the uh, development of surface technology and the uh, design of the implant was improved a lot during the last 10 years. So we are living in this stage. But still, most of the dentists still waiting two or three months in the mandible or five to six months, four to six months on the maxillary arch. So how many months does you wait on the maxillary posterior? Four months or more? Three months? Three months. About six months. If there is no bone defects, of course. No bone defects. Six months? Wait. So I, I waited more than six months and sometimes ten, ten months at the soft bone. Just we thought it's, a, it's a low. We cannot break it. Yes, for the one-day implants, for the, uh, it means, let's say, immediate loading. What is the objective key factors? We, have, we should have this four category of uh, objective factors. Excellent initial stability from mechanical interlocking, enough cell PC area for, uh, with existing bone to withstand the initial middle loading. And then no drop down of stability. This is, we can make this very well, but sometimes we don't trust, we cannot trust this initial stability because we know from the literature, the stability, initial stability drop down with the time. And occlusion scheme is very important. But from this pool, main category, the three comes from implant design. How do you think? This three comes from implant design. It's an excellent initial stability. There was a history. Many companies, many scientists, many designers developed different kind of implants different design of implants to what? To do excellent initial stability. So this is one example, Carl Misch. I, I admire him very much, but unfortunately he passed away. So he developed a four different thread design of implants to accommodate the four different bone density, even different surface, surface treatments. It was good prior, but not very successful. We have to prepare all these implants in, in our inventories. 
four times more. It was not easy. This was one trial, good attempt. Then, this one, do you remember this? Sargon implant from USC. It was about 10 years ago. It appeared in the world, so it was very popular. But every plant wants to make an immediate loading piece immediately at the, at the implant placement, especially on the anterior area. So they spread uh, the apex of the implants uh, to get more instability. It was good, but no long-term prognosis. A lot of fractures at this level. So disappeared in two years. So this is copycat of this one. <laughs> and again, Nobel made a Mark Mark IV. So Mark IV said they said Mark IV can provide us very good initial stability, almost double than Mark II. So it was 15 to 20 newton centimeter at type four bone. It was good at that time. It was wonderful, but not strong enough to do earlier loading. You know this graph very well. The red means uh, primary stability from mechanical interlocking, and then blue is also integration graph. We have a transition period, so we have a drop down of initial stability after at third and the fourth week. This was a headache for immediate loading. We have to maintain ISQ stability like this. We should be able to trust the initial stability we can make. So it should be stable. How we can make it? Is this from the bone or is this from the implant design? It's from both. We have to uh, protect the, uh, the bony environment of uh, our patients very carefully. We should respect the biology. From where? From drilling? From design? So everybody knows this is third and the fourth week is the weakest area, weakest period for the implants we placed. So this this grip was from more than was made from statistics from for more than five hundred articles. This is average. So on the weak, weak bone, type 4 bone, drop down is a little bit bigger, much bigger than the hard bone. So at the, at the hard bone, like mandibular bone, we can do immediate loading more often because of this. So Hi, Billy really, Mays I wanted to do immediate fun. loading. The easy so way to fix I want to have this kind of glue or and make it glue. last. <laughs> Mighty Putty is not a glue, but Stick. a super powered epoxy that you can mold to any shape and apply How good it is, right? If we can put any this material on the implant surface foot and eroding immediately. Are a mixing mess. With Mighty Putty, you just, just a, cut like Just a joking. So, whenever you have a new implant system in your hand or catalog, so you have to see five important categories. The first one is cool. Core means the strength for long-term period. So this should be strong enough for the long-term maintenance. Core is only for that. And how we can control the initial stability is from thread. Thread is very important for the stability, initial, especially initial stability, and it provides surface areas for faster or say iterations. And then this is also very important. We know about the importance of the platform switching, which is very good for the biology, but not only this area. We have to consider this area, another platform for the bone maintenance, available bone maintenance. This is very important. And then connection is also important to minimize the biologic width and to minimize the prosthetic complication like a screw losing. Then surface treatment is also important. This is five major category of implant design. If you have some ideas in your mind, so consider these five. And you can change connection, you can change surface treatment or design. So everything will be from, from these five categories. And we tested more than 10 different trade designs on the development of energy system 
and we found this lab threaded design was the best. So it provides us very excellent initial stability, even at the loose bone, and of course, it provides much higher bone implant context, much higher, almost 50% more surface areas. What does this mean? 50% more surface area means we can shorten the lengths to provide the same stability, to provide the same oscillations. So, as I couldn't, I didn't put the, the short implant cases on the uh, today's presentation, but this is very helpful to use as a short implant. And then with this, we can minimize the augmentation. This is really nice. So one lady cut her finger on the test. <laughs> so it's really knife, knife thread. Be careful. <laughs> yeah. With this design, we could make a very good initial stability. Before any reach, as I told you, we had uh, the fatty implant system named as rescue implants from six to eight. If we increased the core diameters to six to eight, from six to eight, the initial stability at the loose bone was only this, 5 to 10, less than 10. Very disappointment. But just the same diameter, different shape, provide almost 30 to 35 Newton centimeter torque force at D4 bone, at the maxillary posterior. It's almost same with uh, recommended uh, insertion torque on the mandible. Right? It's good, very nice much better than Mark IV before. And we put one more idea. How we can control, how we can make more initial stability on the different bone quality. We know under the ring techniques, we know osteotome techniques, but it's depend, it's very limited applications. So a patient, uh, uh, NRH has 10 different diameters, but actually, it has a three different core diameters. From four millimeter, 5.5, .5, core is same, 3.3. .3. But the difference is different depths of thread. So if you overlap the different diameter of implants like this, you can see what's the difference. What's, what's the difference? So from here to here, see, exactly the same core, but different thread depths. Why we made this? Because we, I hope we, as a dentist, a surgeon could control the initial stability according to the bone density. But at the wider diameter of implants, wider core of implants, we change the, the thread depth, pitch of the thread, because we should provide the space for the angiogenesis. This is the main idea of, uh, from us. Where we can use the advantage of this. Before any reach, I just made same osteotomy sockets, same holes, according to the company's recommendation, regardless of bone density. Of course, as I told you, we could do a little bit under drilling or a little bit wider drillings on sometimes osteotomy techniques, but basically it was the same. And we had no choice. Only we could place the same diameter of implants into the hole. And What's the difference of initial stability? Definitely, this has much less initial stability than hard bone. And then, what can we do as a as a clinicians? What can we do? Just we wait long. This is guidance from Dr. Brennermark. When from when? From 1982. Six months here, three months here. How we can change? Just choose different thread depths. After drilling, same osteotomy circuit, just you can feel. Okay, bone density here is very dense, here is very loose. What, what can I do? So you can choose different thread depths. Same core diameter, no need to wide, widen the osteotomy circuit with additional drilling. Just same osteotomy, uh, same diam core diameter, but different thread depths. Then, I cannot say exactly the same. Say, but it can improve the initial stability very much. So our aim in 
uh, in the period of development was to make same to make the same uh, loading protocols like mandible implants at the maxillary posteriors. So that means we can shorten the loading period from six months to three months. That was our target at that time in 2010. We started to design from two, 2009. So this is one case from 2010. 2010 is June 3rd. From the x-ray, you can imagine. You can just see the different bone density. Not exactly, but just the so radiopacity, radiolucency. So I made a small punch. Then I made the drilling up to 3.8. Yes, I did. Same osteotomy socket, but I could feel the different bone density. Much higher, much better here. Very loose here, as you can imagine. Then what I can do? I chose different thread depths. Then, see? So, 4 millimeter here, 5, 5 millimeter here, 5.5 here. To what? To make same quality of initial stability. Then, this is really type 4, type 5. If there is type 5, this was type 5. Very loose. Then, usually I did primary closure for the safety of our saturation. But in this case, I made almost same initial stability with this. Why we have to make initial uh, primary closure? So I just connected healing abutments. This is immediate after surgery. So my at that time, as I told you, I, my aim is to make a prosthetic procedure at three third months. Taking impression, finished the prosthetic procedure. This is seven years later. Good, good, excellent result. And this is another advantage, a very simple case, but this case shows us many possibilities on the initial stability. The patient had failed implants. This implant was failed. And I extracted, removed, and wait three months for the soft tissue healing. In three months, we cannot expect bone re, re, uh, regenerations. See? Socket was like this, huge, like immediate extraction socket. Then the available bone was from here to here, about two millimeter. What's your option? What's your treatment option in this case? Membrane? Augment, bone augmentation. Yes, of course. What's your plan? If this is your patient today, what do you recommend to the patient? Okay. Augmentation? Okay, bone graft, membrane, PLF, if possible. Then, then how long you wait? Four. Four to six months. And open plaque to place implants, right? And at that time, how strong the bone density you expect? Four months later. Not so strong. Not so strong. Very loose. It depends on the bone graft material. If you use the autogenous bone, they're much better. But bovine bone and uh, uh, allograft, it will be like a typical type 4, very loose bone. But you have to place implants, and stability is not so good. So you have to make primary cross again. How long wait? It's loose bone, very soft bone. Three months again, right? OK, do second stage surgery, and start prosthetics. Good. That's the routine process, as far as I know. How many months you spent in this case? I removed, waited three months. Bone graft, four to six months. Implant, three months. And one, more than one year for this simple case. I free for bridge. Three unit bridge is much better. But how we can change? How we can change the paradigm? What is the key point? 
What is the key point in this case? Initial stability. If you can sure, if we have confidence to make very strong initial stability from this two millimeter bone, will be, story will be changed. So I made only one step drillings with the fine. I didn't care about the sinus membrane. Operated completely. Two seconds. Yeah, the remaining bone was exactly two millimeter. Then I placed the eight millimeter diameter of any ridge. Core is 4.8, 4.8. That this is the thread depth itself is more than 1.6 millimeter. And in this case, the first thread only that this first thread was engaged with the bone, only. The the other thread was just floated in the socket. But now, what kind of treatment do you do here? I got more than 30% 30, 30 newton centimeter torque force in this case. More than 30 newton is good. Then, then see how big the bone defect. Small. It became very simple now. Less than jumping distance, two millimeter. So you can expect bone regeneration even without bone graft. Then, excellent initial stability, you can do with excellent initial stability, you can do one stage approach. See? I did healing abutments and the bone graft, simple collagen membrane and primary corrosion. Easy. Then, how long? We have to wait. Only this thread was engaged with bone. How long we wait? Only two millimeter, less than two millimeter jumping distance, socket apex. Fortunately, there was four sound bony walls. One implant. How long? Yes, you are brave. <laughs> yes, two to three months. No more than four months in this case. This is really same with the fresh extraction sockets. Three months. So, three months later, I take impression, like this, finished case. So, what is the key in this case? With the limited amount of bone available, available bone, initial stability. So, five months later, then, this is uh, almost seven months later. Look at this. Remember, I said, I populate the sinus. Then, look at the bone here. Overgrown through the apex because implant surface is very sterile and very stable, so it works as a as it osteoconductive. Then how about bone overgrowth on the to, to the platform? It's a little bit different story, but it, it shows the importance of uh, connections. Very simple because initial stability. Again, to the one stage approach, and I'm, I'm one day implants, one day implants. I told you this drop down, friend us. We should have a very strong ISQ number from the beginning, and this should be maintained forever. How? Oh. So this is case from my colleague, my ISQ guy, Dr. Han. He did a sinus bone graft four months ago, bilaterally. You know, the four months is not long enough to make a very strong bone. So definitely the quality of bone, we can say is grade four, grade five. And he placed eight implants, and these two implants were placed into loose, very loose bone. And this hand is a little bit crazy, and he called patients every week up to nine week, ninth week, he checked. Every week, he untightened the healing abutments and <laughs> check. And <laughs> the patients also a little bit crazy. <laughs> then, see, ISQ. Normally, from the literature, it should be like this. It goes down up to third and fourth week and goes up. This is normal. This is type four one. Okay? Type three, type four bone. So it dropped down, it's a little bit more than mandibular bone. Same. So he finished, this is final restoration, nine week. Nine week, only two months. 
two months, he finished the case with the final illustrations. So different mandibular case from the same Dr. Han. He extracted this from mandible and placed seven implants and checked every two weeks. Look at this. All ISQ shows increase. Increase in the mandible. It's very strange, very strange. And he made a uh, full functioning temporary crown like this. Why? Why this implant shows like this, this kind of uh, strange ISQ patterns? Because of design of thread. So normally, we use the 60 degree of the thread designs for a long time. Now, it's becoming to this shape. Many companies trying to use knife threaded implants now. Because of what? To minimize compressive necrosis. Initial stability is good, but we have a compressive necrosis for, for, for a while. That's why third and the fourth week, we have drop down of ISQ. But this, we can minimize compressive pores. Then, nobody believed me. It was finished the design, and we found this kind of strange phenomenon with our clinical cases. And then, we had 100 cases, more than several hundred cases already. And whenever I have a chance to present to the European and the American dentist, nobody believed me. No, this is your implants. You are lying. So I went to UCLA with the crime. Professor, I made this kind of findings, uh, but nobody wants to believe me. Let's do one clinical test, one clinical uh, research in, at UCLA in the United States, clinical study, UCLA. Then everybody will believe. OK, so my professor agreed, OK. The theme was very simple, same. So even we made the same surface, surface treatments. But only the difference is thread design. And the doctors in UCLA, period department, placed the two implants side by side, two different implants side by side, checked ISQ, eight week. Result was exactly same with our, our result. This thread showed the decrease on ISQ until the third or fourth week and it almost made a pretzel, no change. But this showed increase only. Even single implant didn't show drop down on ISQ. So the professor also surprised, oh, what a difference, what a strange implants. And then suddenly he had a chance to have one implant in his mouth. <laughs> so what, what kind of implant do you want to use? Definitely, enrich. <laughs> So my professor has one energy implant in his mouth. Because he, if he wants to use any kind of implant system in the world, he can call easily. He can <laughs> be provided. But he chose energy. And once again, I went to uh, Dr. McCauley, St. Joseph University, Le uh, Lebanon. And as I told you, at the beginning, we aimed the loading period unloading period to minimize to third, third month and the maxillary posterior. So at this moment, I said to uh, Dr. Professor McCauley, let's make a very stable, but very new loading protocol. Let's try to, to do four weeks loading protocol everywhere, single crown, multiple, mandible, maxillary, regardless of number of implants, one implants per mouse. One, one month is, is really good right, to the patients, for the patients. At the beginning, my, Dr. Professor McCauley just hesitated. Mm, can be very dangerous. I'm university, so I want to make trouble. But I, I continued. Finally, he accepted. So this is his implant placement. Then he measured the, the whole implant with the electronic talk lens connected to the computer. What, what is the, the result? This is insertion talk, insertion talk value on the different bone density. 
This is average, average. Type 1 showed more than 100 newton centimeter torque force. Average. Can you believe? Type 4 showed more than 50 newton centimeter torque force. Average. So in total, average was more than 80 newton centimeter. How do you feel? Maybe many of you are still using Nobel or Stroman. These companies recommend to us to use no more than 35 newton centimeter. If you have more than 40 newton meter, 45 newton centimeter, you will be in trouble. Your bone will you will have necrosis. How about this? And look at this here, 180 newton centimeter. Can you believe 180 newton centimeter torque force? And also he checked ISQ. Measured ISQ. ISQ was same. No drop down. Different bone quality, same. Maintenance. And then this research was not published yet. It will be soon, very soon. But this is a report, personal report to me. So old implant was successful. Four weeks. 100% survival at three months. Average 100 newton centimeter torque force. Can you believe? So it doesn't matter. High torque can make sure, can make us immediate loading more successful. But if you use different threads, like 60 degrees, more angulation of your implant thread can make a compressible force. It's danger. So that's why this, we developed these two gadgets. To, con to check ISQ. And whenever we check ISQ numbers, the tightening force of a smart bag should be same. So we made a Mac torque to tighten with the same, same torque force. This was designed by Megagen, but made in Austria company, Sweden. So this changed almost everything. So believe there are many different versions of ISQ machines in the world, so you can use any kind any kind of ISQ machines, but please check your implants with ISQ every time. Then you can shorten the loading time much more. All the implants in the same patients have a different ISQ pattern. Really. Same implant and different location, different ISQ. So by checking ISQ on the different implant system, I don't care what kind of implant you use, but will shorten the loading period. Minimum 30%, I bet. So, I, I don't have enough time to explain how important this double offset. But I can show some slide from my clique. This is Ed Schmas from Albania. Albania. So he sent me this beautiful soft tissue responses. I'm a periodontist. I told you, I'm a periodontist. I can do soft tissue management quite nicely. I did freezing bar graft every day, three or four cases every day before. But nowadays, I don't do that. Only once or twice per month. Why? Because I don't need. Even there is not enough keratinite tissue, this is very stable. And in most cases, the soft tissue comes up. No decrease. We worry about the recession, gingival recessions, but believe it or not, gingival level goes up. In most cases, 90, more than 95. I don't have a statistics, but my, my patience is very important, more important than my business. So if there is something wrong, I cannot say to you. But very stable because of design over here. Surface. Let's move to surface. Surface is very important. SLA, surface is kind of a standard. But we decided to put calcium ion after SLA treatments. This is a standard protocol of SLA treatment, SLA surface treatments by Stroman. You can see you can find this protocol from the literature uh, from sand blasting, this big alumina particles. Strong acid, high temperature, short period. 
This is good. Very excellent type of surface treatment. But nobody knows there is acid residue or not. In the end, how we can recognize if there is some acid residue there, how we can find out? Many Korean companies, all of them are my friends, made a big mistake because of this. Hundreds, thousands of implants came out from the patient's mouth at the same month. It was like a disaster. So we hesitated. We had the techniques from the beginning, but we hesitated because of this. Oh my God, I don't want to make that kind of uh, disaster. And we made studies for, the, for more than five years. And we finally we did found two more process can make very safe, very nice surface treatment. We can sure no acid residue with this process. And we modified the blasting size, the particle size. And we modified the temperature and the time. And so average was about two microns, which is considered as a ideal surface, surface area. Then I can say this is much safer. Because at the final inspection, our in uh, inspector can recognize quite a spot. If there is acid, the calcium ion make as uh, salt, which is which is white in color. And on the osteointeration period, calcium ion can be released to a fa from uh, fastened osteointerations. So animal experiment showed. 15% faster. Or remove talk, remove talk value. Let's see, a little bit different. This is after SLA treatment only. This is after X, X speed. You see, this a small roughness is calcium ion, calcium ion. And many doctors ask me, this seems similar with HA coating, but totally different. That is as uh, nanometers. 500 nanometer thickness, and the, the binding force is very strong. Let's see the video from Dr. Dude of Green Implant Foundations. We're standing in front of the German Reichstag, uh, where our government is uh, hosted. I would like to talk about regulation. We have in Europe a good system that proves the quality of medical devices, notified bodies, they do the job in looking for uh, the process quality of a manufacturing side of an implant. So the problem we have, although we have all these authorities, in the US it's the FDA, in Europe it's the CE authorities, in Brussels, and notified bodies doing the job, we have unfortunately a lot of implants that pass all these processes. and. They get a certificate and under the microscope we found so many contaminants on some implants that obviously we have no control. The Clean Implant Foundation will have a global quality seal and we will work for better quality uh, that every implantologist all over the world will know, not believe that his implant is clean. And this foundation this Clean Implant, Implant Foundation was started last year by uh, Dr. Thomas Albrechtson and uh, Anne Benneberg in Göteborg. And is independent, independent. And uh, they, they had another, they had the um, guiding, guiding uh, the letter to, to Megagen. They spread out all the implant companies so we are going to test your implants, if you agree. I was a little afraid, <laughs> but okay, I will change. Then this is a little bit different story on the XP the treatments. So as you see from the uh, upper line of pictures, all SLA shows almost same color, just a gray. But how wonderful! the XP and uh, the SLA treatment. Can you sure this is perfect or this is good or bad? 
look all, all same. But SLA, the XP treatment is very sensitive. Should be this color, blue. But other implant treatment, even from same SLA treatment, shows different color. Means different roughness, different dexterity on the surface. So I cannot say all of the meaning, but let's compare only with S uh, Stroman SLA because that is the original. My question, is the SLA of Stroman still the best? Yes, yes, but only from the literature. Not real. <laughs> I'm not joking, just I'm testing our R&D guys periodically, regularly, make samples to test to compare the surface treatment, the consistency of the products. Then, look at this. This is Enrich, this is BLT, bone level implants. So look at this. Which one you like? Yes, it's because of uh, different, the, the different particle size. So RA, RA value is higher on the SLA, definitely. It's about four, four microns, but there was too much bumping areas. Should be like this, but it should be very even. So you have a choice to use this implants or this implants. This is not from me. This is from Dr. Dude. And uh, on the on the Japan uh, on the on our Megagen symposium in Japan, Dr. Dude came to Japan to give this certificate to us. This was, he said, fifth in the world, fifth in the world at this moment. So they, are, they continue to test anyway, but we were one of the early, early uh, company, early board for the quality of uh, uh, surface treatments. It was good. I'm, I'm very proud, but I'm saying uh, ours are the best. Should be implant, Implants should be like this, should be clean enough. But so many implant companies showing very dirty, and very not very well controlled uh, surface areas. I, I hope this uh, uh, Green Implant Foundation can work more aggressively to increase the, qu the quality of implant surface in the world. Okay, how important the, this apical design of implants? It's very simple. Nobody take care about the apical design of implants, but we can change a lot of many difficult surgeries easier with this small change. For example, ridge split. All the article shows okay, ridge split is much better than GPL. It's minimally invasive. We can shorten the the period of the treatments and very stable. But in my experience, it was not. It was not. In some cases, my teachers advised to make three bony cuts, and then sometimes we had to make a green stick uh, cutting here. Then during the implant placement, sometimes it fell down. Oh my God, it, then it was really difficult to, to regenerate. Why? It's because of, it's not because of uh, such, uh, surgical technique itself. It's mainly because of implant design. Why? Because this implant shows straight. This is not good for the ridge splitting. Itself is good. I, I believe this is good enough, but not matching with the ridge splitting techniques. And let's say this is thin ridge implant. How thin? Normally three millimeter, right? Two, two to three millimeter only. How wide this apex? Normally more than three millimeter. Right? Apical design is three, sometimes 3.5, 4 millimeter. How we can engage the apex to this thin ridge? That's why we have to make a, these three bony cuts and need to expand with the hammering or Then we have a space to engage the first thread, then we can place. So this is not matching with the, the techniques. So we changed mind. 
image is one of major bone defects we have, especially on the mandible. Should be simple, as simple as possible. So we made <coughs> the apex 2.3 only. So even after two millimeter drillings, only one, one drilling, so you can start to place implants. Believe or not. <laughs> and then again, this is also another uh, big problem. This is the widest area, the widest diameter in this implant system. So when it was placed, even it was completely placed, still the, a lot of stress on this damaged, damaged bone. Not good for the regeneration. In this case, during the placement, yes, it has big stress, but when it was completely placed here, almost no stress. This is good for good for regenerations. We compared, we had a test for the stress distribution. This is yeah, Nobel Active. Nobel Active was very well known for the initial stability, very good. But from where? From which part we have a good initial stability? Yeah. Very outside, almost zero. That means the, 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 the cortical part provide a very good initial stability for Nobel Active, which is not good for rigid splitting techniques. But any reach, 15, 16, 17, much, much less torque force. So this is our recommenda recommendation for the rigid splitting techniques. Don't make vertical cuts, no need. So only one horizontal bony cut, like this. Only one step drillings, or two step if you want, okay. But two millimeter is, is two, two millimeter drilling is good enough. Then place implants. Can you believe? If you don't believe. <laughs> you will need 45, 50 Newton centimeter torque force to stop the implants at this, at this level. Then you can use torque wrench. One full ton on each implant, one full ton. Repeat, then can be placed like this. This is our protocol. How easy? Seven, eighty years old lady came to me. He, he had, he, she used the denture, partial denture, more than thirty years. Suddenly, at the age of eighty, my son, my son, I wanna enjoy Korean food. Korean food is very hard, you know, I don't know, maybe you have to come to experience, <laughs> very hard. So I want to enjoy Korean food. With the denture, it's almost impossible. So the, the son was very kind, so he brought mom to me, then he asked me, please do minimally invasive surgery. Of course, of course. So the patient had only two millimeter thin ridge at the top, so I cut a little bit to make a three millimeter ridge width. Then I made uh, one bony cut to the depth of implant, implant length. And then I made one two millimeter drilling. Here there was here uh, there was more bone, so I made a 2.9 drilling here. But only one drilling, two, 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 two point nine. Then I placed implants like this. I used 50 newton centimeter torque force with the handpiece. So it stopped at this level. And it's time to use head wrench. One full turn, four clicks. And then move. Then it goes down, down, down with expansion of the reach. Finished. On the <coughs> occlusal view, you see, it goes down, down. Unbelievable, isn't it? So, of course, sometimes you have uh, some green stick fractures, but this is nothing. No need to worry about. Then it's better to fill the gap from here to here, even including flap opening, less than 20 minutes. Only one cut, yes, take five minutes about. If you're careful. One drilling, one minute, or two minutes, more than two minutes, no more than, then implant placement. So in 20 minutes, you can place four implants. Then 
bone grafting. Any kind of bone grafting is good, but I prefer to use allograft and uh, collagen membrane, PRF, whatever you want. Then primary closure. Primary closure is better than the one stage approach. I did the same on the right side. Then four months later, I'm taking impression. Usually I wait three months. The patients show, uh, show up one month later, temporary, final restoration, finished. Almost no bruise, no swelling. The patient and the parent, uh, the, uh, the son was very family, very happy to this. So look at this. From here, it's like this, in three months. More importantly, I'd like to say to you, this keratinite tissue, how wide, how many millimeter of keratinite tissue there? Less than three millimeter, also very limited amount. I did, I did freezing the bike wrapped before. I had to, I had to. No keratinite tissue. It's like a, it's like punishment to me. <laughs> so I had to make always, but it was more painful to the patient. Implant placement is easier than the soft tissue graft. And smaller diameter of healing abutment is kind of a trend. Don't try six millimeter, seven millimeter wide healing abutments. No need. In some cases, yes, good, but in this limited cases, small narrow diameter healing is much better. And you can expand with temporary, with the time. But when I de delivered the final restoration, it was very ugly. My God, no keratinite tissue at all. But I have confidence. See, in three months, when I had that first recall visit, see, look at this. It was improved. Nothing done. Just observe. Where? Why this happens? Not only this case. I told you. Gingival comes up with any ridge. No recession because of anatomy, structure. That's why this part especially is very important. Very important. Okay, I have about 20 minutes. So this is the story of R2 Gate. In 2011, after finishing design of any ridge, this guys, our R2 Gate team, gathered together all, de all dentists. What is our next goal? What we are gonna make? So we made the theme of Eureka R2. Let's make a new generation of implant treatments. Eureka, everybody knows the meaning of Eureka. Right? Eureka, I found it, okay. I know it. R2 means uh, second renaissance, rec second generation, innovation. So we made R2 gate software it's almost, it took one year to finish the first, uh, first uh, what is that? beta version. So we aim that R2 gate means entrance to Eureka R2, the gate to enter, into the diagnostic software and the treatment planner and the source supplier of uh, CAT CAM. Maybe you know when, when the software start to provide a stale file from software. Nowadays, it's just normal, common. All kinds of software provide a stale file at the, from your design. When it, when it started, it's from 2012, only five years ago. So we finished the design 2011. <laughs> so I thought we are the first, but we found, I, I, I had a conversation with the SciCAD guys and some other software guys that they already started to develop a similar one in 2010. So all of a sudden, we started same same things. But I can say, Arika R2, the sterilization from r gate was the first from in the world. But Korea is very small, and uh, we are not famous, <laughs> so it took much longer, and it became recognized. The principle is very simple. Combining two uh, digital uh, data, SCBCT, DICOM, and the STL. This was not popular even in 2010. Nobel, still using 
double scanning techniques. I told you, CBCD is not accurate, cannot be accurate. So even we do double scanning, cannot be accurate. The best way is to use the accuracy of the STL file. So we did develop the, the combining technique. This was one of the first, believe or not. <laughs> then from the uh, hybrid design, hybrid uh, software, uh, digital informations, you can see the future crown and the soft tissue, bone, you can design, you can make a planning. Then, after planning, well, it's time to use STLization. We made this term also as first time. STLization is our term we made. So we make, this is just a cloud. Cloud, not touchable, just visible. So we should be able to extract the data to make it touchable, real. Uh, then we can make a surgical stand, the temporary, final, whatever you want. And we found something is not good. Something was not good. We cannot see the quality of the bone. From the CBCT, from the X-ray, all data is black and white. With the naked eyes, with your eyes, how many different black and white you can differentiate? 16. Officially, 16 only, from completely black to completely white. See, this looks bone. We can say there is bone. How, how good it is? It looks a little bit weak. Well, how weak? By converting the black and white to colors, we can see 256 different colors which is very good. See, in this case, this quality of bone is almost the same with palatal gingiva. Very loose. Type 6. Very loose. And which part is uh, dense? Is that from here? Yes, we can imagine, but even the beginners or even the lab technicians, our assistants can recognize which is good. So this, with this uh, digital eye function, our <clears throat> guide, our designers for the surgical stent can advise you what kind of drilling protocols you can use. Hard bone, a little bit over drilling. D3, normal drilling. D4, under drilling. So they provide this kind of uh, advice. Surgery itself is very easy. If the diagnosis and the CBCD data is good enough, and if your STL file is good enough, everything will be very smooth. Normally, it takes one hour for one arch implantations and one more hour to deliver the temporary crown. So in total, one hour, two hours, three hours, four hours. So about four hours later, patients dismiss with this condition. With this, from dinner, he can enjoy meal. Definitely. No failures. Intentionally, yes, you know, the last molar is too much stress. So we didn't deliver the temporary. This is what we provide to the patients. Yes, if you are confident with the quality of the data, you can ask to make the final restorations. But this is Zirconia custom right? custom abutment, we usually make as a final, final abutments. This is very simple video. Can you, can you, can you please? Uh, this has a little bit different. Our surgical stand has a little bit difference from other uh, surgical stand. No. Sorry. So it was good. Okay. So drilling is very easy to do. And unlike other surgical stand, we have hex position here. Not only vertical stops. We have hex positions for the exposition of the implants. This is very important for the single crown.
here, the window. Yeah, here. So, this is hex positions. So for this is single crown, so definitely we need to match the hex of uh, hex of uh, abutments. We have to check the ISQ and the initial stability to make sure the possibility of immediate loading. Custom abutment was delivered. It's very accurate. See the gingival line. It's very well matching with the extraction socket. And then temporary crown was delivered. It was my life surgery, and so it took from the extraction for the for the delivery of uh, until the delivery of a temporary crown. It took 16 minutes only, 16, with all the explanations during live surgeries. So this one should be extracted all as well. This is really easy. If you can make a treatment planning properly, that the result will be always satisfactory. You know, that there is some error factors on the guided surgery. So in general, from the researchers, we know that even the, the tissue supported uh, surgical guide has this much two point some degree of uh, discrepancy. Where we have Accuracy, inaccuracy. This is an article from Seoul Dental University, which is a Harvard University in Korea. Uh, we didn't know, we didn't know these guys are preparing articles to compare different surgical systems. They, the professors compared the seven, uh, six different surgical guides. Then they, they find a result. The Altgate is more important, more accurate than novel guide. Simplant has this much inaccuracy. Why? Is it because of software? No, it's not. It's because of the concept. Usually we print out three uh, regions and we put metal rings. Then we use a spoon, drill guide on the surgery. Then do surgery like this. You, you can compare. What is the important factors? Always gap. You know, the dentistry is it's like accumulation of errors. So we are trying to minimize the error accumulations. This is same. Look at this. There is four different steps. 3D printing, bushing, and, and uh, bushing and drill guide, and drill guide and drill. There's four different gaps. That's why we didn't use this one, metal, and drill guide. We use uh, drilling straight. Because of this, the, the discrepancy became half. It became half. So software itself will be good, will be same, almost same. A different concept of drilling. And this hex position is only from, from R to gate. Process is very simple. CBCT, STL, import data to art gate. Of course, you have to have a quite, quite good quality of a computer. Then export to the machines. Reprinting, milling. Easy. But there was, we found one more problem on communication. Do you have uh, any communication, what is that, uh, communication tools between company and yourself? It's ridiculous. How they know? How the designer knows my intention on the surgery? It's a big problem. So we divide the mobile version. We found, we know, same with me. I don't want to stay the, in the clinic longer after treatments. So I want to go back home as early as possible. Then our lab technicians and designers usually work in the night, in the evening. How we can communicate? we made a mobile version on the iPad. So even you are at home, even you are at other place, you can check immediately with the two fingers 
You can decide that you are implant length, angulation, as you want. It's not a big difference, but should be precise. One millimeter back, one millimeter deep, 0.5 millimeter. So this is really useful. Again, the only, the only mobile version. There are one more, but it's rubbish. <laughs> So the Articate Light version is really useful to communicate to your designer and yourself. So actually, as a dentist, as an implantologist, we are responsible for the design and for the result, not our designers. So very easy. One more important thing is root membrane. Many different names on the same techniques, but root membrane technique was from Michias and Dr. Sion Pars in Greece. So we helped for them to make the, uh, the surgery, surgical kits. It was very good, but more importantly, we can use, and this is really nice, right? we can protect, prevent the uh, rigid resorptions with these techniques. Very, very good, and everybody knows this is, this is good enough, but sometimes we don't know how, ang how much angulations the root has and uh, which angulation we have to place. So this is CVCT. Then, so this is, this is the re report from my lab designer. See? So I found uh, there is very thin root uh, labial bone here. So I design, decided to make root membrane technique here. So I put the implants a little bit, a little bit dingle side to make more looms. Then this is the link sequence. They recommend it to me according to the bone density from this eye. So, so in this area, number 11, the, he, the designer recommended me to do 3.8 by 5 on a cortical area, the, uh, the crystal part drilling. This means as you want. This is mandatory. <laughs> this is as you want, something like this. Then you can make very good initial stability. From this clinic, I did like this. I will show the short video again. This, so let's see. Uh, not easy case, as you know. This, this is a front case, and we have to. I need to provide. I need to provide the temporary crown, definitely. After the remover, I made that holes and removed the, the palatal segment of the root. So this is the canine is very long and root, root length is very long. The the diamond burr should be long enough. So, but this drill diamond burr was made in Japan, very famous uh, uh, burr company. So there is no wobbling even if it has a long more than thirty centimeter and uh, thirty millimeter length. It's no wobbling, very stable. So there is a step by step on the kit. And you see, gingivalization here. So we can reduce the cervical diameter on the temporary a little bit. Then the gingival line will come down. This is a number of implants. So with the idea of the drilling. The drilling is very simple, just boring. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And implant was placed. And I'm gonna. I'm making trim. I'm trimming the palatal side of the implant, uh, of the bone, to minimize the, the labial position of the implants. The implant was placed. Eleven. So hex position is important. I'm because I'm gonna use the hex. Hex the customized abutment, not the single uh, non-hex uh, prosthetics. See here three point. 11.5. So look at the, the high torque. So I'm checking ISQ. So for for the immediate uh, one day implants, the ISQ should be more than 75, and the insertion torque should be more than 45 newton centimeter minimum. Yes. Then customized abutment were connected with the jig. Uh, this is multiple case. So in many cases, uh, there is uh, some gaps between uh, 
uh, temporary crown and a real patient. So we had to trim a bit and glue together with the resin adding. Screw hole was filled. Then this is before, this is after final illustration. See, the gingivalization here was almost covered. See, we did the gingival line. This is power of root membrane technique. Many, some doctors, uh, partial extraction techniques, some um, socket shield, root shield, same, uh, same. Okay, take a message. My implant practice can be changed by choosing different design of implants. Definitely, believe one. <laughs> but anyway, try. And ISQ is very important. It's very useful for to check the, the availability of a uh, Implants and art gate. I think this is really a bit, really useful. Free download. You can download from the internet. Success. Again, I have three minutes more. Sorry. <laughs> How to make a success? This is uh, actually this should be my theme. Be uh, confidence. So you are good enough. Excellent already. So. Don't need to be, feel shame. Be confident on yourself. And should be humble to the, kind enough to the patients. This is be, very basic as a, as a clinicians. And always try to find a better way, improve. You need to invest on the materials and the brand, equipments, everything. And we believe sharing is the best way to learn. So don't hide. You are, Unique technique behind. There is no secret in the world. Open and share your techniques. And then keep asking and put some question mark on your daily, daily, sorry, sorry. Anyway, I want to show you one video of our company. It's working. Sorry. <laughs> Here. Mega Gen never stops. This is new movie we made just a few weeks ago. <laughs> to prolong your health, to protect your happiness, to pursue your dreams. And even to preserve your smile. Megagen never stops advancing. <laughs> Building a healthy tomorrow for humankind. Making future technology a reality. And great innovations for a simpler life. In over 100 countries around the world, healthy smiles will go on because Megagen never stops innovating. We're making technology to realize dreams. Creating the future of healthcare. Megagen never stops. Health, future, smile, total healthcare innovator for lifetime smiles. Megagen. Simply advertisement to you. <laughs> Thank you very much for your. <laughs> Thank you. So.
Mr. Park, uh, thank you for your lecture about uh, this success story, about your innovations. And um, yeah, I remember, and I have to tell also the students and uh, not the alumni now, um, if somebody is not listening to you, yeah, you have a new idea and nobody's listening to you, the big companies or the small companies, you see uh, the main take home messages, you have to do it by yourself. Where is he? Ah. <laughs> okay, now we open the discussion. Uh, please uh, do it as always. Uh, be very critical. Ask him personally now uh, about his uh, yeah, way to do, about his clinics, about his uh, life, about his products. Yeah? Okay, if you want to make a new implant company in your country, I'm ready to help you. Really? <laughs> good promise. Give your own hands. Yeah? <laughs> Uh, Dr. Park, thank you for a uh, great lecture. Um, with your approach to uh, delivering the final restoration at the time of implant placement, when I, when I immediately um, provisionalize restorations, my approach to occlusion is much different than my approach to occlusion with the final restoration. How do you manage that? Yes, occlusion, as I told you, from the four different objective criteria, the, the, one of the most important things is occlusion scheme. Mm -hmm. We should be very careful for the occlusion and uh, for the excellent. It depends on the stability and the bone quality. If you place, if I place implants on the mandible, which is very good in quality and very good stability, no bone defects. So I usually make a C contact, occlusion contact, CO, no lateral, of course, no lateral excursions. That's it. And uh, on the anterior, we have a very strong labial guide. So we have to remove this, this context. Sometimes we have to make shorten. We have to shorten the, the clinical length, temporal, the temporary crowns. So this, uh, uh, for the full mouse case, there is no way to escape. <laughs> so uh, we have a full context. It should be uh, it's mutually protected occlusion. So no no uh, steep cusps. So it's, it's different from, from patient to patient. But uh, if we can make a, um, more than 45 Newton centimeter initial insertion torque, more than 75 ISQ, very easy to achieve with any region, anyway. But then, so need, no need to worry about uh, the normal function of occlusion, normal functional occlusion. So we had a very successful result. Good, thank you. No more Some than- more questions? Yeah, here. Hello, Dr. Park. It Thank was you. a very nice presentation, I must say. Uh, as Paul asked us, it should be a critical question. Yeah. So this is just a critical question. I'm really concerned about the threads you have. Uh, they are really um, knife edges. So how do you control the strength in terms of titanium? Because titanium is not that strong. That can, Because you have a core of 2.8 or 3.3 millimeters, and then you have a longer threads. Mm -hmm. So in the long run, how do you see the uh, thread design withstanding all the forces? Very good question. Very important question. Thank you very much for your question. And for 3.5 millimeter, a diameter of implants has a 2.9, only one thread. In that case, no need to use deep threaded implant. So only one thread. But the four millimeter with the 3.3 color, and we have a four different thread depths. So in many cases, doctors want to use deep threaded implants at the heart bone. No way, no way. It will not go 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 down. Sometimes it's stuck in the middle. You cannot take it out even. So at the heart bone, just to use same thread uh, pitch with the Stroman implants. Only 0 0.4, 0 0.6. That's enough. Then at the loose bone, yes, it's better to use more than one millimeter pitch at the thread depth. Then you can make the same balance, similar initial stability. So you have to know so the, the biggest, the most frequent complications from the beginner, the, the first users of Enrich is, is that the, they want to use five millimeter diameter of implants into molar area, which is very difficult in the, in the mandible, very difficult. And yes, you can use, but I don't recommend. 
one millimeter is, is good enough. Then there is we made one millimeter rules. If you have a 50 newton centimeter torque force with a hand piece, you can down, uh, place it down, and if the fixture stops with only one millimeter exposure above the crest, then you can continue to to place with the hand wrench, torque wrench. But if you have more than one millimeter, for example, two millimeter, you should be very careful. It's better to remove implants and put the next drill or the cortical bone drill, then you place, it's better to place. At the, of the soft bone is fine. You can place, even there is more exposure above, uh, above the crest that you can use, but hard bone, don't try at the beginning. With the uh, repeated uh, experience, you can control the initial stability. But don't try deep threaded implants at hard bone. That's, that's the, <laughs> the important things. Darmia, you have a question? Uh, Dr. Park, uh, really impressed uh, by your presentation. Thank you very much. Um, short practical question. If you put something inside, you should think about how to uh, put it out. Um, do you have, I have some difficulties with um, uh, explantation of any ridge. Do you have any device to remove it out? Explan explantation. Explantation. It was stuck in the middle because, yes, during no, placement. It was absolutely difficult to remove the um, to any rich implant, uh, and I got a big uh, bone deficiency after the uh, extraction. So just uh, because sometimes to remove the implants, you, you should to be very gentle with the rest of the bone. So do you have any device? So I would like to get to know. If you already use the torque wrench implant placement, then almost it's impossible. Already, it's impossible no, to no device. It's almost impossible. The stability is very strong, yeah. as you saw. But just as the insertion torque is more than 80, 90 Newton centimeter easily, then reverse torque should be more than 100, sometimes 150 Newton centimeter. It's almost impossible. It should be. Careful. <laughs> yes, I know because I had this case. One surgeon set the implant a little bit too deep in the front area, mm -hmm. and so actually the patient didn't want um, artificial gingiva. Mm -hmm. So to start the situation again, I should remove the implant in reach, and I had a really it was a big problem really. So on the maxillary arch, maxillary anterior, that if it was placed immediately, then. You can use the, the torque lens back. It's the only way. Okay. Not integrated, not integrated, but it's strong, very strong. Thank you. Thank you. For your lecture, uh, as I am a user of a megagen. I always ask uh, myself how would I uh, would treat the periimplantitis? Do you have some uh, a protocol, special protocol for treating this periimplantitis in uh, such uh, widespread uh, imp uh, implants? You know. Yes. The most. Thank you very much. One of the most frequent questions: If we have a deep threaded implants, and if we have a periimplantitis, how we can reach to the bottom of the thread? First, I have to say. The periimplantite is much, much less than other implants. Yes. Then, if you have bone loss, and it's, sometimes it happens, especially with immediate, immediate implant placement, no bone, upper, uh, bone, bone regeneration enough. In that case, if you use the deep threaded implants, I do grinding of the thread. So to make that 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 very polished, but you can the thread is very thin. So with high speed burr, carbide burr, you can cut the thread easily. Then you can put the, some bone graft material. Yeah. Not ideal, but yes, you can treat it like that. Thank you. Uh, I have also one question because um, of your lecture. There are some conflicts of targets. Uh, first of all, you say uh, the mega chain should be 
um, uh, implant, um, yeah, which uh, solve these problems with the different bone qualities because you use one diameter and then with the comb beam CT you can choice the different diameters of the threads. Thread, yeah. Yeah. But on the other hand you say it's not uh, so easy to use for beginners. Mm. So uh, what is uh, the reason for? This is my first question and the second question is in literature, in the new literature we learn that if you increase uh, uh, initial torque, yeah, um, and um, then uh, we have more death bone and death zone, yeah? mm -hmm. and uh, you have now said, okay, we are very happy that we have 80, 90 newton centimeter, 100 newton centimeter, of course, but um, this is a little bit contradictory to the literature. Right. Can, can you have these two statements? Yeah, mm -hmm. the conflict of targets for the easiness with any reach. Mm -hmm. And the second is with the high torques you get with this kind of design. No? Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. right. yeah. <laughs> That's why the first question is how we can overcome the difficulty of any reach. That's why we developed the anyone. You can try anyone first. Same. <laughs> same thread, different core diameter. Thread is the same. So you can just follow uh, the drilling protocol of other implant systems as a user. Then, the, okay, when you you have to understand. Yes, we have to understand the bone more friendly. Then, with repeated use, I believe after five, five to ten implants, then you can realize, okay, this is very special. I can make this kind of initial stability. You can adjust as you want. From fifty, okay. If you want to make only always fifty newton centimeter torque force, you can make it. So. Actually, with any reach, it is difficult because we don't make recommended drilling sequence. It can be different from bone to bone, from doctor to doctor. So we made it intentionally. That's why it's a bit different, difficult. The second question, why we can be confident for the strong initial stability? More than 10, 100 Newton centimeter, 80, 70, 80 Newton centimeter is very easy to make with any ridge, but no bone necrosis. Why? We don't know. We actually, we tried to find out the reason that the, the, the professors in the university said we need the supercomputer to calculate it. <laughs> so it cost a lot. So, okay. But basically, with my uh, experience, it's because of uh, bone contact with bony contact with the core of the implants. The core of the implant should not contact with the bone. If the core contact with bone with the pressure, then we have bone necrosis. But any ridge has almost a 90 degree thread. This thread only contact with bone, not core. So that's why the old initial stability comes from thread. Thin thread. So it's different way of uh, initial stability. That's why I, I cannot show the, the, the data from the experiment, but our, our team just uh, made the conclusion like that. Okay. So we have now the last question because we are getting hungry. Thank you, sir, for your like, um, so very small question, something else. When you started off all this journey with your colleagues, uh, a strange question maybe, but did you, because you believe so much in, in your visions and you can see that the way you're talking and what you achieved, did you from day one invest from your own money or look for investors? <laughs> Very important questions. <laughs> yes, of course, of course. I didn't have enough money. Still, I'm not rich enough. So, and from the beginning, as I told you, we started with my clique. More than 70 investors, all dentists, seven zero, all dentists, all my juniors, all my friends. So I called one day when we decided to set up the company. I called to my students, my juniors, call, please send me some money. My bank account is like this. I, maybe I cannot return this money. <laughs> Just present to me. Then I got uh, almost two million. Two million dollar in a week. So I died. Then with this two million dollars, we invested. But finally, it was not enough. 
So almost uh, I sold my house. <laughs> so I'm, I was almost bankrupted. <laughs> there, was, there was some difficulties that yes, we overcome. Uh, uh, as you see, but I'm enjoying really. Not the, I'm, I think I'm not very successful. I think not, not as very successful. A successful trip I'm doing. I'm enjoying very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> I, have to say, I have to say, you have listened to him very, very nicely in a very concentrated way. And uh, you hear, in the beginning of his career, nobody listened to his vision yeah. and uh, <laughs> to his ideas. Yeah? And therefore, he knows best what happens if you have this problem too. And he gave me a promise, yeah, you're now a big company, more than 60 countries now, your products are delivered. Uh, if it's good or not, it's, we don't know exactly, <laughs> because we are very critical, yeah, very yeah. critical. And uh, so he said, okay, if you have an idea, yeah, he will listen. Yeah, definitely. And look, uh, he has now the any rich and some problems. Mm. Then he has the one rich. And you have the idea for the optimal reach, okay? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. We, okay. have, we have open inno innovation systems. So if you have good ideas, we can make products under your name. Yes. We, can, we, will, we will try to make your ideas as products or as a touchable something to share your ideas. Maybe your small ideas can change the world. I believe, I believe. Don't hesitate. Don't be shy. Open your mind. <laughs> Thank you very okay. much again. So, now we to Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great. It was great. <laughs> I'm very happy.